Hi, my name is Pluni Pennings, and I'm a professor at San Francisco State University. I work on the evolution of viruses, usually the evolution of drug resistance in HIV. But today I'm going to be talking about using evolutionary biology to understand some of the news surrounding the recent coronavirus outbreak. I'm not a coronavirus expert, but I still hope that this video can help you understand some of the news. So there's a lot of news out there and that may cause you stress and that is perfectly uh, normal and expected. It causes me stress. Um, and so I want to encourage you to uh, take care of yourself. That means washing your hands and staying home when you're sick, but also uh, maybe go outside for a walk uh, to calm down or simply search YouTube for a five minute meditation um, to, to calm down and, and not, not let the stress get to you. So I get a lot of my news, science news from Twitter these days. And that's because a lot of my colleagues post results on Twitter uh, before they publish it in articles. And this is especially true for the coronavirus outbreak. And the big news this week, um, a few days ago, was that uh, Trevor Bedford, he announced that the team at the Seattle uh, flu study have sequenced the genome of the COVID-19 community case reported yesterday from Snohomish County. So yesterday was February 28th, 2020. And they've posted the sequence publicly. So they've sequenced the virus. This virus has about 30,000 base pairs um, in genome length. And, and Trevor Bedford and his colleagues and other people immediately uh, can, can analyze the sequence. He says there are some enormous implications here. So again, Trevor Bedford is an evolutionary biologist and he tracks viruses. That's what where his expertise lies. Um, so what he's saying, I have to move myself around. What he's saying is that this case, WA2, so the second case in Washington, is on a branch in the evolutionary tree that descends directly from WA1, the first reported case in the USA, sampled January 19th. So that's like six weeks ago, also from Snohomish County. So this strongly suggests, he continues, that there has been cryptic transmission in Washington state for the past six weeks. So he thinks that the virus has been transmitted um, uh, from person to person in Washington state for uh, at least since January 19th. And so obviously that is huge news and it's, um, it's worrisome. So the evidence that he has for that bold statement is a phylogenetic tree. And so if you're in an evolution or a genetics or, or, or another kind of biology class in college or in high school, you may have learned about phylogenetic trees. You may not have realized how important they could be in our daily news. So here uh, is the phylogenetic tree from his tweet. You can see here this, this arrow, it shows the WA2 case the sequence from the WA2 case. And here this other arrow shows the WA1 case. And so they're um, close together in this phylogeny, which suggests that this one is actually the ancestor or, or closely related in terms of transmission to this one. So a phylogenetic tree is a branching diagram or tree showing the evolutionary relationships amongst various bi biological species or other entities. So in this case, we're not talking about species, we're talking about samples of viruses. And it's based upon similarities and differences in their physical or genetic characteristics. Here, we're looking only at genetic characteristics. The virus, um, it's for, if you are studying the evolution of viruses, it's much, much easier to look at their genetic characteristics. And so that's what they're doing. So imagine a transmission chain of the virus. So initially there's this dark blue person who is infected with the virus, likely in China. And then this person infects two other people and they each infect another person, etc. So if viruses didn't mutate, then all of these people would be infected with exactly the same virus. 
But viruses do mutate, and in uh, coronavirus, this new coronavirus, acquires about one mutation every other week. And so maybe every second or third transmission event is with a virus that is different at one or two positions. So let's add some mutations to this transmission chain, but I'll show you first how um, uh, something about the notation of mutations. So what we usually do for the notation of uh, mutations is that we write the original nucleotide, then we write the genome position, and then we write the new nucleotide. So the original nucleotide may be an A or a C or a G or a T, and then the genome position can be any number, in this case between 1 and about 30,000, because that's the length of the coronavirus genome. So for example, you can have an A5000G mutation, which means that at position 5000, Originally, there was an A, but now the virus uh, has a G at this position. So I'm going to add to this transmission chain a mutation that I made up, A1000G. But now if this person has a, is infected with a virus that has that mutation, if they transmit the virus to the next person, they will also be infected with the virus with that mutation. And so on and so on. So the orange um, transmission chain may also acquire some mutations. So I'm going to add some mutations here as well. And so, okay, in reality, we don't have, uh, we don't know who infected whom, and also we don't know of all cases, and we don't have samples for everyone. So let's remove some of the samples. And so imagine that we just had five samples. We have the original sample in China, and then we have uh, two blue samples and two orange samples. So now what you can do, and which is what people who track viruses do, is they make phylogenetic tree. Phylogenetic trees are, are based uh, on shared characteristics, and in this case, shared mutations help us build the phylogenetic tree. So the blue ones, they share the A1000 G mutation, and so we'll put them together in the tree. We'll put their branches together. Same for the orange ones. And so a tree could look something like this, where um, the, the two blue ones, they share an ancestral branch here. And somewhere on that ancestral branch, the mutation A1000G occurred. And now everyone, all the descendants from that branch, will have that mutation. And the same for the orange ones. Okay, so if you had two samples from Washington State and they both share the mutation, it's likely that they're related to each other uh, in a transmission chain. In my example, we have an A1000G mutation. In reality, the Washington State samples share another mutation. It's the 18,060T mutation. At that position, the original virus in China had a C, um, but now uh, the samples in Washington carry a T at that position. Although I should say that um, also in China, they have found this specific mutation. And so probably the original sample with that mutation was in China. And so there may have been descendants of that um, uh, of that sample in China. So let's add that to our picture. So now imagine that this person is infected with C18,060T. They infected the person who ended up in Washington State as Washington 1 sample. And they also infected other people in China. So in principle, the second Washington State sample, they could have been infected by someone in China, right? It could have been a new import from China. So now we have two hypotheses. One is, I would say the alternative hypothesis is that this is a new import from China. And the original hypothesis, which is favored by Trevor Bedford, is that there is local transmission in Washington. And that's why these two samples both have the same mutation. <clears throat> I think that the local transmission in Washington hypothesis is much more likely First, because a new case from China would have likely been detected. And second, 
the C18060 T mutation is actually rare in China, in Chinese coronavirus samples. And so even if there had been a new case from China, it's unlikely that they would have had this particular mutation. Okay, so let's go back to the phylogenetic tree that was shown in the original tweet. And so here again, we have the WA2 case and the WA1 case. So if there was ongoing transmission in Washington, then several people must have been infected along the way. And because this virus is quite infectious, if there's five people infected, likely there's a lot more because each of them would have likely infected two or three people. Okay, let's have a look at nexttrain.org. That's a website that was actually built by Trevor Bedford and colleagues, and it's used to track viruses uh, as they evolve and spread around the world. I'm going to open up a new browser window and open next strain. And so it says real-time tracking of pathogen evolution. And we can go here, novel coronavirus is the first thing on the website because everyone is looking at it, of course. I'll go to latest data and analysis. Okay, so what you see here is a phylogeny. It's showing 153 of 153 genomes. So that's all the genome samples that we have from the coronavirus outbreak. It's really remarkable that we have that much data, um, even though the outbreak only started two and a half months ago. So here um, on the x-axis here in this phylogeny is time. And so these are early samples. They're all from Wuhan. But these late samples, they're from all over the world. So for example, here is a sample from California, a sample from Singapore, a sample from Switzerland. And so here is the WA2 sample. And here is the WA1 sample. And so there's this branch that they share and if I hover over that branch, it says nucleotide mutations 18,060T, C18,060T. And what I can do here on this website, which I think is really cool, is I can tell it to color not by admin division, but by genotype. So I'm going to click on genotype here. And then I'm going to say I want to color by nucleotide. I'm going to put the position. So in this case, I'm interested in 1860. 18,060. So what happens immediately is that um, now the tree is colored such that the samples in yellow carry the T at this site at 18,060. And all the greenish, bluish samples carry the C at that position. And so you can see that there's only four samples that share that T mutation. So there's the Washington sample, there's a Chinese sample, another Chinese sample, and another Washington sample. And it's exactly because this T mutation is rare in this phylogeny um, that um, makes it likely that the two Washington cases are related to each other. So I hope that you'll take a little bit of time to play with this website. It's it's really an amazing tool that allows us to use our knowledge of the evolution of viruses to uh, inform public health decisions in real time. So let me know if you have any questions. I'll post some resources uh, below this video.